We're going to be looking at the 1962 independent low budget movie Carnival of Souls which was produced by Herc Harvey and a film that you know, remained relatively unknown for a long time but has garnered a cult following and with good reason you know uh, unfortunately for Herc Harvey this was his one and only feature uh, he he did have a part to play in um, a re-release movie I think it was 1997 but um, you know it never really when it was released it, it wasn't popular it was second billing it was a double feature with a movie called the devil's messenger the lead actress mary candace hillegas you know a former model and sometimes tv actress and she never really went anywhere after this she has like sporadic roles in a couple of movies here and there uh, some television television work and you know was only paid about two thousand dollars you know, did as a kind of a run and gun type of thing you know just went in did her job and uh, got her money and just went and uh, i suppose she never even thought that it would really amount to anything and the same with her carby which is the same shame because what they put together here is a solid movie which has a very unique feel to it. Uh, some say it's like, uh, you know, an episode of Twilight Zone or something like that. But I think there's a bit more to it than that. You know, maybe in the story, story may be a little bit weak, a little bit obvious. But I think the real star of the show here are the visuals. Here we have the director who played the main antagonist throughout the movie. This creepy guy who's stalking the main character Mary throughout the movie now the style of this movie is something that stands out the lighting effects and you know the different camera shots and that the director was you know a maker of industrial and educational films And uh, it's you know it's it's unfortunate that he never really carried on after this you know I, I think uh, and in a different time you know he would have gone on to have a good career and maybe would have created some more really unique horror movies such as this one because he really did have a really good eye for you know and. Really good eye for good camera work, good lighting, you know, able to create this eerie feeling throughout, this feeling of dread, of impending doom. And uh, another cool thing about this movie, the Sol Tear, Sol Tear, which is a, a key location in the movie and almost like its own character in the movie, a place that our main character, Mary, is constantly drawn back to and something that intrigues her and we find out you know slowly but surely why this place intrigues her the saltier you know has a long history of its own a place that was owned by the church of the latter-day saints and was built by them towards the end of the 1800s and owned by them until they sold it on in 1906 and it's a place that went through a lot of of uh, rebirths and destruction. You know, it's been burnt down. It's been flooded. It has suffered from, you know, droughts, like the lake drying up. And uh, managed to survive the Great Depression. And has even been, you know, rebuilt using, you know, salvaged parts from an Air Force hangar and then finally you know opened again I don't know how many miles down the road uh, as a music venue and was quite successful in from 2005 you know had uh, acts such as um, 
Mastodon, Rob Zombie play there, uh, Bob Dylan, and uh, that crazy you know, lady Kesha. It's always singing about getting getting drunk. Uh, she's also played there. Tiesto played a set there. Uh, you know, it became quite a popular music venue. You know, in its, I think probably its fifth fifth version of of this this place. But in this movie, it um, is host to all these ghoulish characters and uh, who don't belong to the land of the living. And we find out that Mary herself is, uh, you know, she's been drawn between the land of the living and the land of the dead. And we slowly find out why, you know. But the, the interesting thing about this movie uh, is the visuals mainly, you know. I think he's created, Kirk Harvey, he's created a movie that has a really unique look and was a big influence on the likes of Giorgio Romero. You can see it in uh, you know, a lot of his movies. Uh, there's a key scene in this movie that Giorgio Romero has kind of made a kind of homage to uh, in Land of the Dead. And also a big influence on, on David Lynch, especially in its visual style. You know, a lot of the characters of his, you know, uh, you know, some of the characters in Twin Peaks, you know, look like they could have came out of this movie. Uh, not as a rip off. I don't think he ripped these characters, you know, the look off, uh, but maybe as a homage to this to this movie, which I think is probably one of his, uh, you know, one of his favorites, and definitely a movie that was a big influence on him. And you can see also in uh, Eraserhead, you know, also I think he's, he's influenced visually by this. And, um, you know, the music in this as well, it can be quite uh, creepy and used to good effect, you know, to denote when Mary is going between the land of the living and the land of the dead. And uh, that's a really cool thing, you know. The one thing that I just noticed as well, looking at the um, character in the movie, her name is Mary, Mary Henry. Now, in the video game Silent Hill, in the video game Silent Hill 2, the main character, James, is looking for his dead wife called Mary, who's trapped in the town of Silent Hill. Now, the Silent Hill games are influenced by the movies of David Lynch, who was influenced by this movie, Carnival of Souls. So I think there's possibly some link there between the two. And, uh, you know, the Silent Hill games are kind of similar. You know, you have characters who are drawn into this world uh, they're repulsed by it, but at the same time, they're intrigued by it. And uh, there is a foreboding feeling and inevitability of it all. You know, a, a dread that something bad is going to happen eventually to the lead character. As what happens in this movie, Carnival of Souls. And um, leading to a grand reveal at the end. You know, so um, definitely uh, interesting comparisons there between between the two so this movie anyway it definitely it's worth a look uh, you know mainly for the visuals and for the use of lighting and, and uh, the different shots are really fantastic some really cool moments in the movies uh, you know unforgettable scenes that stand out and um you know, have been used again in a lot of, you know, different movies. So go check this out. You can find this um, anywhere because it's free in the public domain. And uh, you can, you know, catch it on HD on YouTube or Amazon Prime. So definitely a movie to check out during this season of The Witch. So hope you enjoy and uh, we'll chat to you next time. Click and subscribe.
and see you soon for some more creepy videos and retro content. Yeah, hopefully I'll be covering the movie House and um, Ani Baba as well as Current Echo. Some creepy Asian classics, uh, favorites of mine that uh, I will hopefully bring some videos of to you over the, over the following days that we have left here of October of Halloween. Take care all and uh, safe health to you all. Goodbye.